talk about when people want to, quote unquote, come off of their medications. They say, I want to stop taking all my medicines. I don't want to be on these pills. Uh, so what are the things you look at? Obviously, we gather a full list of medications and supplements. And then what sort of process do you look at when you're going through talking about what things we can discontinue, what things we could simplify, what things we can eliminate? We talk about this quite often. So when you're thinking about taking away supplements or medications or whatever else, you never want to be the bad guy. And unfortunately, there's not many healthcare professionals, whether they're dietitians or doctors or naturopathic doctors or whatever the case may be, that are able to balance the risks and benefits of any medication or supplement. Because as we say often, the difference between a medication and a supplement is one's prescribed and one's not. And nobody is going to recommend a supplement or medication for you to start that if they don't think it's gonna help. So then if you're taking things away, especially if you're a member of an interdisciplinary team, they can almost kind of see that as, well, they chose my medication or supplement as the least helpful medication or supplement. So that's a, a difficult, way to look at it. it's almost kind of like being the mediator between the members of the healthcare team and the patient but as their uh, you know healthcare provider somebody has got to do that and often it ends up being us yeah i mean when you have someone that comes and they have a list of medications and that specific agenda you know we have to meet them halfway so we can't just immediately strip away every medication or supplement that somebody's taking if they worked with a, a dietitian, for example, there's a specific reason that people are taking that. If they're going to a, a gastroenterologist and they've been put on some sort of you know, medication for their stomach, usually to treat you know, a symptom or um, a disorder of some kind, gastric motility, uh, you have to look and see, okay, what was this actually prescribed for? And uh, unfortunately, we have to play detective sometimes with the patients. A lot of times, if the list grows too long, they're not sure you know, why they're taking what medications. And yeah. it can be useful to comb through some of those specialist notes and see you know, what was this person thinking whenever they you know, started this medication. Because mm -hmm. like you mentioned, everyone has the goal of helping a patient when they start them on something. We're not just trying to prescribe drugs because uh, you know, big pharma gives us kickbacks. And we actually try to prescribe the more cost-effective medications. A lot of good ones have become generic and are on, you know, for example, the Walmart $4 list or mm -hmm. Mark Cuban's online pharmacy. You know, yeah. There's a lot of affordable medications that are doing people a lot of good. That's very true. And you should have a healthcare provider or a health coach or any member of your interdisciplinary team that is looking for not only the right medication or supplement, but the best value or the best deal on whatever medication or supplement that there is. There's obviously some limitations to that as you know, different pharmacies or especially different supplement companies can have uh, variation in the quality of the active ingredient and the inert ingredient as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at uh, generics versus you know brand name, they do have to go through some pretty rigorous trials and be approved. But I think you and I have both seen some patients who, you know, they have to stick to you know a specific manufacturer for like their thyroid replacement. Or you know, even if the numbers are not changing a whole lot in the blood work, you know that patient can you know detect a difference, or they attribute that difference to the change in medication. So keeping things consistent in that department is really beneficial, just for the continuity of care and not chasing lab values around and not you know telling the patient that there's nothing wrong. It's the same medication because we don't want to ever you know, deny the, the symptoms that somebody's experiencing because you know those things do happen. Absolutely. Speaking of consistency. When you're thinking about taking medications away, it's the same decision-making process as when you're starting medications. So you're thinking about subjective data and objective data that it's helping the patient. So their biofeedback, how they're feeling, how their labs look, how their diagnostics look. And then you're looking at those same things for how they might be detrimental to the patient. And you're looking at it for the intended purpose of the medication. And you're also looking at it at other secondary unintended purposes that might be having kind of a beneficial side effect or having a, a two birds with one stone effect. Yeah, and another way to simplify things, uh, as you alluded to, is you know, if you have one medication that's multi-purposed, 
or if you have two medications combined in a sort of a poly pill. So thinking of people that have resistant hypertension, there's a lot of good poly pill combinations out there now. Mm -hmm. So the patient says, well, I just want to take less pills. Well, that can be a, a fairly easy thing to do if you're just combining multiple medications into the same pill. Because pill burden is a real deterrent to long-term consistency. It is. There's been lots of excellent studies that look at adherence, which some people call compliance. But adherence is basically if you're prescribed this regimen, how likely you are to be able to reasonably take it. So if you look at blood pressure medications, there's been studies that show you know three different pills taken separate versus one pill. There's obviously going to be better adherence with one pill. Yeah, it just simplifies things. 